Today I'm going to show you five things that I bet you did not know that your MacBook could do. And the very first thing is called Hot Corners. Now what are Hot Corners you might ask? Well it's a certain customization tool where you can change what your computer will do based on where you put your mouse in the corners. It's a way to have quick access to a lot of different applications. Like for me right now I have a Hot Corner set uh, for Quick Note. So all I have to do right now is bring my mouse down to the right hand corner, click on it, I've got a new note that I can create. But all you have to do to set this is go to desktop and screensaver, click over on screensaver, and then you get the option of hot corners. So you can customize this yourself however you want to do it. And you can set things like you can start your screensaver, disable screensaver. Maybe you don't want to have to go to lock or sleep or stuff like that. You just want to do that straight from here. I like being able to lock my screen without having to go through all that mess. So you can see right here, we've set it to lock screen if we go up into the upper left hand corner. Boom, my computer is now locked. Hot corners are not like a shortcut function where you can automate lots of cool stuff, but if there are little things that it takes you a few seconds to do and you can do them instantly, it's just a way to smooth out little friction points, which one of those friction points for me is Quick Notes. This is like cool thing 1.5 is Quick Notes. We talked about this in the iPad video, but it's the same thing for Mac OS where I have a terrible short term memory and I need to be able to write stuff down and then save it and catalog it into my normal workflow. We saw we've got Quick Note up, test, quick note and we can then move it wherever we want and just like iPad it saves it to a quick note at first so you can see we come over to notes we've got quick notes up we've got our test quick note we can move her just over into the regular notes and you can see boom here we go it is a regular note so you can easily go from nothing to boom I'm ready to start typing out a note save it and then immediately move it into your normal workflow I Love this. Okay, the very next tip that I want to show you is something that I just found out about and it's remarkable. It's how you can sign documents from PDFs right in your email application. So let's actually we need to quickly convert this into a PDF. All you have to do you double click on the image to open it up. Then you click on this little circle pen that drops down to this menu. You can add text, you can select you can draw on it if you want to, but what we are here to do today is where to sign this. All you have to do is click the sign button. It will let you create a signature using your trackpad. So instead of doing that weird like with your mouse where you try to do a signature, it's actually really intuitive, especially if you have something like the MacBook Pro 16 where you got this gigantic trackpad. You click on here and then now it's just straight up like a signature pad. So we'll sign it like Gary. Look at that. Look at how cool that is. Then all you have to do is you press any key when you're done. So we'll hit space bar, then done. Now we've got a signature that we can drag and drop on any document or any form that we want that's a PDF that's been emailed to us. And we can do this directly in, okay, we save a copy. There you go. Now we've got a copy of that signed document and we didn't have to leave our email client to do that. That's that's incredible. For how much I sign stuff throughout a week, that's almost, I don't want to overstate this, that that's like life changing or anything like that, but it is kind of life changing. And it's so much easier than the steps that I used to need to use inside of like Adobe or anything like that. Or sometimes you got to pay for an upgraded version to even be able to manipulate PDF files like this. So being able to do this freely right in the mail client, I think that's a huge win. The next cool thing I bet you did not know your MacBook can do, this is more of when you plug it into an external display, but I'm gonna show you this here too, because it's important, especially as I get older, uh, sometimes 4K, 5K, 6K monitors, they scale the resolution of the display so small, it's hard to read. And I have already come across this. So the way you fix this is we go over to displays and then you can scale the display yourself. So you could set it to either be default for the display, like right now, I've just got the MacBook Pro 16. We're doing default for this display because I actually quite like how Mac OS looks default on the MacBooks. Um, but you could also scale it to maybe you're crazy and you like it as small as possible. I am definitely not like that. You can make it as big as possible. This is not for me. This is like those old like giant phones that you would get your grandparents for Christmas kind of thing. I prefer one step up from default when I've got this plugged into an external monitor because when you start talking like 32 inch or bigger monitors, Mac OS gets really small, especially on my LG OLED monitor. So this is how you can handle that. If like me, you might be starting to get up there in years and you need a little help seeing like the tiny text of all of the things in a normal Mac system. Okay, and the next thing that I bet you did not know your Mac could do is you can control most of what your Mac does 
from your status bar up here in the upper right hand corner. Check this out. So you can see here we are recording the screen. That's what that little image is. Um, but you see our battery, we can go to our battery percentage and our battery tools from clicking on that. So you see this, we click on battery preferences, it brings up all of the options we get, we can see our usage history, the battery power adapters, a schedule that we can set if we want to, if we want to control our networks, boom, we've got all of our networks right here, we can choose our preferences, we can turn off Wi Fi, we can connect to other stuff, you can also do spotlight search, but I prefer doing spotlight search with command spacebar, I guess that's, it's not really a th everybody should know how to do that. If you don't know how to do spotlight search, it's just command spacebar, the best thing you'll ever get. But the really powerful part about this is the control panel. As you can see right here, it controls everything, like all the mechanical features of your computer. You've got Wi-Fi, you've got Bluetooth, AirDrop, your display brightness, you can control right from this, your sound, your audio levels, what's playing. You can choose the screen mirroring if you're using something like AirCast. Our focus modes, you can control so much from this simple menu. Like everything that I need to control really on a day-to-day -day basis is right here and it's really powerful. But one of the cool things, um, especially with the MacBook Pro 16, if we're talking about this menu dock and we go over to battery preferences, this is also how we can turn this into high powered energy mode. So the MacBook Pro 16 has two energy modes where you can do like the MacBook Pro 14 where it's in just like the regular normal usage, but you can also move it into high powered mode, which gives you better support for intensive tasks. It provides more energy to the processor and the GPU doing this. It says you might have some louder fan noise because you're doing more, the computer needs to cool it off more, but I've not heard much in this. If I'm doing a lot of video editing from my laptop on the road, this is the mode the computer lives in, and you can get all of that from this upper right-hand menu system. Okay, and this one's kind of big, especially for a person like me that has a habit of clutter. If you're like me and you have a cluttered desktop, sometimes you're gonna go in front of clients, you're gonna go in front of people, you can't have your work desktop look like it's just a bunch of crazy stuff thrown on it or people will think less of your work it happens to me from time to time on mac os you get this cool thing called stacks though you right click on your screen and then you click on use stacks and look at that it takes everything and then categorizes it into like items so you got images movies and then we've got ted videos here so it will do folders separately but it will neatly organize everything for you uh, so you don't have to look like a crazy person when you go into a meeting, a client's office, stuff like that. But then just because it looks cluttered doesn't mean it's actually cluttered. There is probably a method to your madness. If there's a method to my madness, there's a reason why my desktop looks the way it does. When you stop using stacks, you just click on it again, and then everything goes right back to where it was. So when you're trying to pitch an idea at a meeting or something, you can organize it into stacks, but then when you go back to your own like desk or you go back to your home office or wherever you're normally going to work in your own little system you can undo it immediately and then go back to your crazy little system i love that stacks is incredible it's just one of those nice little quality of life features that can really save you some hassle later down the line and then a bonus tip this would be tip 6.5 because remember we had that 0.5 in the beginning tip 6.5 is where i get all the wallpapers that i use for mac os i see your comments a lot of the time saying gary where do you get all your wallpapers well here's where i get them uh you go over to the internet Imagine that, we find these on the internet. I use a website called Unsplash. It is a website that lets you find all sorts of pictures, images, text, stuff like that, that you can use copyright free. It's not really copyright free, you do have to follow the Unsplash license and I would recommend you read through all of this, but these are freely used photos. You can download them, you can use them for commercial and non-commercial purposes, and you do not need to attribute these to their owners in the website, but you can't like sell the pictures anywhere and you can't compile them to make your own like website for it. But I like finding all of my background images on here. So you can see here, we've got paper boat. And then here you go. Here's the paper boat image that I found from Alex Padurariu. I'm sorry, Alex, if I pronounced your name wrong, but this is one of my favorite backgrounds, which is why I use it so often. But yes, that is where I find all of my wallpaper images or the images that I use here on YouTube. And if you like this video, I bet you would like to know what it's like to buy the most expensive refurbished MacBook. Save yourself some money. You can find that by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.